Many of the farmers are telling us that most of their problems are because the weather is so unpredictable. The climate is changing. So, the planting season is uncertain. Rains come or don't come. This is causing many problems for farmers. We want to give them the help and knowledge they need to adapt their farming methods, increase their income, and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. Now, I may be a man of very many talents, but even I cannot control the weather. But here's the good news. As the climate changes, leading to unpredictable weather, we all have to learn how to be more efficient and more productive. Battling uncertain weather caused by climate change is a struggle, but it's a fight we can win. During our visits to farms, the Shamba Shape Up team have seen the many difficulties farmers face. We have also found some very good methods for farmers to use to help them adapt to all these changes in the weather and land around them. ICRISAT is one organization helping farmers to get good weather information to help them plan when to plant and when to harvest their crops. What we are doing, we are trying to establish the, the, the impact of climate change in this zone by also giving the farmers information on, 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 on the probability of, 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 the, of, the, of getting rains and or not getting rains. Mm -hmm. We are also researching on forecasting. We, are, we, we also got, got the basic, basic information from the farmers. Uh -huh. So in the, in the long run, the objective of the study is to establish whether farmers, when they get the information on forecasting, are they benefiting from that information. Uh -huh. We are also trying to establish the best ways to, to, to get information to the farmers. Is about the, the weather. About the weather. And forecasting. And it. forecasting. So you want to change maybe the farmers to become weathermen? <laughs> Not really. We are trying to, 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 to advise them so that uh -huh. they can take advantage of, mm -hmm. the, of, the, of the weather change and improve on production. Is it working? It will work and it is working. The yeah. reason being this, this zone is really a food insecure zone. Yes. And if, the, if we don't change with the climate change, Yes. then we'll be disadvantaged, wow. especially in terms of food security. We make our way to Kari Research Center. Here, the farmers are trained about the different weather patterns to help them to be able to plan their farming calendars better. Information given creates awareness on climate change. The condition of the atmosphere is determined by many variables. For example, temperature, humidity, rain, wind, and sunshine. A weather station is where these elements are observed, measured, and recorded. At the Kari weather station, they use equipment to measure rainfall, wind direction, and speed and the strength of the sun. All these measurements help scientists make better weather predictions. And this information can help farmers in planning when and what to plant each season. In dryland areas, farmers need techniques for gathering water and improving the quality of their soil. Better soil means better crops. Planting the right kind of trees can help improve the soil, feed your animals, and stop floods from washing away your shamba. We visit the farm of Angela and Joseph in Makueni to find out more. You can see he's harvesting water from the run of there. Right. And then the water is being used for the purpose of growing and uh, uh, of these uh, particular plants. Mm -hmm. So we encourage that the trenches be a bit wider, around right. four feet and maybe around two feet deep, so that we can collect a lot of water mm -hmm. and a lot of silt, which the silt will add to soil fertility. Right. And the fertility will uh, bring nutrients to these plants. Joseph and Mr. Benson get to work to widen the trenches in preparation for when the rains do come. This will benefit all the trees planted in the trenches. The fruit trees like oranges we do better with improved trenches. But Mr. Benson has some more useful advice for farmers in dry land areas. Ah, ah. What do you have for us here? Oh yes, I have these mud papas trees. We uh -huh. call them mud papas because they have several uses. Right. This is Grevelia. Uh -huh. It's a very good plant, especially in this dry area. It is used as a shed, uh -huh. uh, fuel wood. It is also supplies some feeds for animals, especially during prolonged drought. Uh -huh. 
mm -hmm. and it is also improves on soil fertility. Right. Uh, we also have this one. We call we call it moringa oleifera. It is medicinal. Mm -hmm. right. It's vegetables. Mm. It also improves soil fertility because it is nitrogen fixing. Right. And it is also fodder for the animals, especially the pods. And again, we also have this one. We call this one uh, Melia species. Very good for timber. It really? makes very wonderful furniture. Mm. It is drought resistant. When do I need to plant these trees? These trees are very good for you, especially this area. You can mm -hmm. get firewood. You can get shed. Yes. You can also get some feed for your animals. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it can improve soil fertility, especially this your soil, which is not very fertile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has some soil erosion control effect. Yeah. And uh, these trees do not need a lot of water. And yeah. bearing in mind this area is uh, moisture stressed, yeah. we really need these mud purpose trees. These are some of the techniques to help your farm survive irregular weather. Good climate change adaptation means finding farming methods that help you make it through the droughts and hard times caused by uncertain weather. One very good technique for maize production is the push-pull farming technique. We visit Mary and Robert in Maseno to learn about this. Years ago, they adopted the push-pull technology, which is farming without the use of pesticide control striker weed and maize stock borer that destroys maize crops. Mr. Nyagol is an expert in push-pull technology. Mr. Nyagol, this push-pull, it's quite interesting. I cannot even get enough of it. Explain to me again. How does it work exactly? Push-pull is a, a new technology developed to assist farmers control some of the major constants to their maize production. Mm -hmm. One of those constants is the stem borer, the other is tiger weed, and oh. also it helps the farmers to improve soil fertility. Uh -huh. So push-pull technology is a, a technology which helps farmers con control the problems and therefore help them to improve their maize production. Oh, it's quite interesting. How does it work exactly? <clears throat> okay, uh, how push-pull works is uh, we plant maize in the normal spacing we use to plant the maize, mm -hmm. and in between the line, mm -hmm. we plant desmodium. Uh -huh. Desmodium is a legume, and the desmodium will produce a smell which the stock borers don't like, so uh -huh. they will be pushed out of the field. And when they are pushed out of the field, they are attracted to the napier grass which is planted around the maize field. Uh -huh. And they lay the eggs there. They, when they try to feed on the napier grass, the napier uh -huh. grass produces a watery substance that traps the insects and kills them. So uh -huh. although they are uh, pushed out of the field and attracted to the napier grass, they don't survive. More maize is one benefit of push-pull technology. The other is the availability of desmodium and napier grass, which gives a high quality fodder for livestock. So, at least when the cows have their new troughs built, they can be fed well. So, Mama Mary, yes. how was your maize crop before push and pull? Ah, I really fall, cried fall. because oh, I could not get anything. Uh -huh. I used to get only four kilograms from the plot. Uh -huh. It was terrible. So the harvest was poor? The harvest was poor. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of hunger mm -hmm. and I had family to feed, mm -hmm. but there was no way. And how about now? Ah. Hey, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. It's now. wonderful. You're getting good harvest. For the first time I started mm -hmm. push pull. Mm -hmm. Okay, a sack came. That is eighty kilograms wow. out of four. That's wow. good. Just imagine. So you can see that the push pull technique is a good, cheap, and effective climate change adaptation method. Because it gives you better crop yields and more food for your animals, even in the dry seasons. In Bita, Lawrence learns another way to make use of the plants used in push-pull technique, make silage. He will show us how to use the napier Lawrence cut down earlier, so the animals have fodder in times of drought or flood. Now, mm -hmm. uh, this is the silage pit, and then we have the napier here, mm -hmm. and... Uh, these ones are also napier in these bags, and this napier here. Then uh, we have uh, the black polythene sheet. Yes. That one, this is what we'll put down there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we also have uh, uh, molasses, molasses. Mm -hmm. 
and we have water. Good. So first of all, we may have to put the the Tony. Can, oh, you want me to help? Yes, I want you okay, to help. Okay, fine. Yes, yes, yes. Dig a pit, line it with polythene. Put in your chopped napier grass and some desmodium. Add one part molasses to three parts water. Sprinkle that into the pit. This is to preserve the fodder. Compress. Keep layering until the pit is full. Cover the pit tightly, then cover with soil. This will keep for months. Having food for your animals during the long dry seasons is an important way to make more money and adapt to the changing weather patterns. How long does it have to stay inside there? Uh, once it has taken three months, uh -huh. then it automatically it is ready. Uh -huh. yeah, you have to take it in bits uh -huh. and then you must make sure that you cover it again. Uh -huh. And then when you come back again to, to get the materials, you, you open, you get the materials, you cover it again until the time that you'll finish the whole of this material. Making silage is a vital source of fodder for your livestock in times of drought and flood. Aloys has another benefit of push pull to show Lawrence, making hay. To do this, you'll need a pit, a ball of string, and cut desmodium from your push pull field. You must only cut the desmodium line by line and should only be cut when the maize is mature. The desmodium must be dried in the shed. Dig a pit for the size of bales you require. In this case, we have a pit which is 60 centimeters by 45 centimeters by 45 centimeters. Place long pieces of string across the pit both ways. Place your dry desmodium on top of the string in the pit. Stamp it down and repeat the process until the pit is full. Tie the string tightly over the top and remove your hay bale. These hay bales can be stored in a cool dry place for more than three months. It's a very cost effective way of feeding your animals and all you need is a string. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up, where we are looking at ways that you can deal with unpredictable weather. Another climate change adaptation technique which can help in low rainfall areas is planting sorghum, a drought-resistant crop which is ready to harvest in three to four months. We visit Joseph in Makueni to learn more. Joseph told us he has problems with his crops and soil which is very unfertile. I have brought a man with a solution. We are introducing some varieties of crops which can do well in this arid area. For example, if we use um, sorghum, it will do well in the short rains and you'll get enough yield with the short rain we are experiencing. We can also use manure and fertilizers in our soil to improve it. So, and why sorghum? Sorghum is a, a good resistant to drought mm -hmm. and it takes a um, short time to mature. How much do I need to plant in an acre? One acre we are supposed to use four kilos of sorghum. Smart logistics run cluster groups. Cluster group initiatives were developed by IFDC to help groups of local farmers to get help and advice on planting and a guaranteed market for their crop. They have collection centers where farmers take their sorghum crop. It is weighed and they are paid by warehouse receipt or mobile money transfer. Sorghum is drought resistant, provides food security for the family and food for your animals. Planting drought resistant crops isn't enough. You need to have a good marketing plan too. Lydia in Nakuru learned about a cheap and effective method for drying vegetables to get better market prices out of season. Now Jane, I can see Lydia's chilies are very, very good, looking very healthy. But Lydia, you have a problem. What is it? Mm -hmm. From here on to the market, it's 200 bob, and when uh, I get there, they said that they are buying at a raw price, at a 20 per kilo, oh. and I have already used 200 shillings. So you're spending a lot of money taking your chilies, which you have a lot, yeah. to the market, but when you get there, sure. they're offering very low prices. 
And what should she do, Jane? Uh, most farmers have the same problem like Lydia's. They don't plan where they are going to sell their produce, where they, how they are going to market it. So it's lack of planning. Uh -huh. So before you produce, you have to know where is your market? How are you going to market it? Now, what is this? <laughs> this is a Sora dryer. This is what I told you about. Uh -huh. Lydia, I told you about uh, uh, drying your chilies with the solar. Yeah. This is what we had prepared. Mm -hmm. This is a tray for drying. Yes. And we have a chamber there that heats, that's heated by the solar mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. And the heat gets in here in this chamber mm -hmm. and then dries the chilies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So within three days, mm -hmm. these chilies will be dry enough to be preserved for a long time. Okay. Yes, and then you can sell them at your own time. Mm -hmm. When the prices are very good. Ah, that is good. So that you can make a profit mm -hmm. out of your yeah. chilies. We went back to Lydia to see if the chili dryer was helping her to get better markets for her crops. Lydia, yes. how are you? Good. It's good to be back here again. Mm -hmm. So Lydia, tell me, how has your life changed since you were last here? I have so many customers these days. Really? Yeah. So you're doing very, very well. Mm -hmm. And what other achievements have you had in your life? Since I have started drying these chilies, I have so many hotels. Uh, they want my chili mm -hmm. and I used to supply them a week. Ah. Mm -hmm. So you're supplying hotels with your chilies? Yeah. Uh, my life has changed already because I have a lot of money and I, am, I managed to take my child to, the, to a boarding school. Aha. You taught me how to dry my cherries and mm. now I am making money mm. through them. Another effective adaptation technique for farmers is creating compost on your farm as George and Rose learn in Muthiga. So to tell George about the benefits of making a compost heap on the shamba and how to construct one, we leave him in the expert hands of soil scientist Francis Shivonje from IFDC. Compost is uh, another form of uh, farmyard manure that is very important in adding uh, nutrients to your farm. The goodness with compost is that you can use locally available material, the waste uh, from uh, plants, uh, the waste from the kitchen and also the manure from uh, the cow dung to make compost. So, what's the best way of constructing a compost heap? First, dig a pit in a shady place on the shamba. One foot down and about four to five feet wide. Put a layer of dry plant material at the bottom of the pit. Then a layer of wet green leaves. Cover that with some cow dung, which works very well with ash from the jiko. Cover with soil. And sprinkle with water. Repeat this layering process until the pit is full and the compost rises to the height of about two feet, or even higher if it is contained within wooden supports. Cover with grass or polythene, and to be ready to use in about six weeks' time. To test its progress, you can dig a stick into the center of the compost and feel how warm it is. And the great thing is, it can be used anywhere on the shamba and costs nothing at all. The more compost, the better your soil, and the more crops you can grow. We know that when the weather changes, land, both for farming and grazing for animals, is affected. Shamba Shape Up advised farmers to move to zero grazing, which means keeping your animals in a shed and bringing the food to them instead of taking them out for grazing. This approach helps conserve the land for planting while ensuring that your livestock grow well and produce good meat and milk. 
Zero grazing involves building a good shed for your animals and growing fodder plants for the animals. You get better production if your animals don't walk around to graze all day. A good livestock shed has a sloped roof to assist in water gathering. Three separate troughs for fodder, water, and supplements. An open central area with a sloped floor for the slurry. And a calf pen near the mothers. Water is precious and is expected to become even more scarce in the future. Shamba Shape Up has shown you ways to capture and use water more efficiently, which is another form of climate change adaptation. Make sure your gutters are all fixed and in good working condition, and that your water taps are tight and working well. Using captured rainwater for drip irrigation is a very efficient way to water your plants. Another important adaptation technique is conserving fuel to save the trees and to save you money. It's so smoky in there. It's very smoky. My eyes can't see it well. I find myself soot in there. In the nose. In the nose. My eyes are in danger. Uh -huh. Everything is not well good. One way to do this is to use better and more efficient Jico stoves, which use half the fuel an open fire does and give off less smoke. Using less fuel is better for the trees. The cleaner fumes are better for your health. My Jico is very good because there is no smoking. Yes. So my eyes now you see very far. Less man on firewood. Uh -huh. No more smoke. Another way to conserve fuel and save money is to use solar lighting. We introduced daylight lamps to many of our farmers, all of whom said that it had helped them not only with reading, eating at night, working at night, but could also be used to recharge their mobile phones saving them fuel, time, and money spent going to phone recharge centers. And they feel healthier, as they do not have to breathe in the fumes of kerosene. These are just some of the techniques and methods we at Shamba Shape Up have found, which can help you adapt to the changing weather and climate in your areas. Silage. And making compost can all help. As you have seen, by becoming a more efficient and productive farmer, you'll be able to deal with unpredictable weather and be well prepared. You'll be able to adapt to climate change and become a healthy, richer and better farmer.